Hey guys, welcome to another edition of YouTube Developers Live. We're here in New York City in the studio. We have Mark and mm -hmm. Sandeep. Hi guys. They're here from BuzzFeed, and they're going to talk to us about using BuzzFeed in their mobile application. So first off, before we get started, why don't we go ahead and tell people what BuzzFeed is? So BuzzFeed is the best place on the internet to get new, irreverent, breaking, and viral content, and then best share it with your friends. Absolutely. And it's full of cute cats. <laughs> and what makes it the best place? Um, you know, we have a big editorial staff that's out there uh, combing the internet for the best uh, content and putting it together in a way that makes you want to read it, makes you want to share it with your friends. Um, you know, we've, we've kind of taken it to a whole new level. And cool. we have the best users who are sharing it across the <laughs> web. <laughs> the best users. You hear that? If you're using BuzzFeed, you're the best users, in the words of Mark and Sandeep. Absolutely. That's true. Um, so tell us what you guys do for BuzzFeed. So I'm a senior designer. Uh, I work primarily on our mobile products across all platforms. And I'm the director of mobile technology. OK. As such, I lead the mobile apps team. So uh, if you haven't gotten a hint yet, this is a show about mobile. So being that it is a show about mobile, why don't you go ahead and show us the mobile application? Certainly. So it's, a, it's an awesome app. Uh, ah, it's a praying mantis. Uh, <laughs> sorry. I hope I got that right. Yes. So. Um, Here's our YouTube integration. Your YouTube integration is a mantis? Yes, it's a true fact about <laughs> praying mantis by Z Frank. OK. Can we? Uh, oh, that's in full screen. So let's go back, see how, how this came out. So, um, okay. so where are we now? What are we looking at? Here? OK, this is a buzz page. An article. An article. It's from Z Frank, and it's about the true facts about Mantis. And we have a embedded uh, YouTube video. However, the web view is displaying an image, and as the user taps, we we you know intercept the tap and launch the YouTube player in the app. So this sort of provides a seamless integration to the user. And uh, they can share this video, email their friends, or you know, tweet about it. OK. So outside of um, uh, Buzz Pages specifically, you can uh, see that this is the uh, overall architecture of our app. You can find our uh, main feed, essentially, our newest content. Uh, on the home screen are uh, various uh, sections and verticals that we've launched in the last year. We have almost 11 of them at this point, if you're interested in politics, uh, technology, food. Uh, we even have an animals vertical. If all you want to do is look at cute animals all day, you can do that too. Um, you know, you as a user can go on and uh, react to content with your favorite reaction. If you think it's LOL, if you think it's a fail, win, if you just can't believe it and it's OMG, you can see content stored that way as well. Um, oops. Um, and then you can see what's hot uh, on BuzzFeed and on the web with our partners online. We're partnered with uh, dozens of websites that give us analytics, and we uh, link out to them as well. So um, yeah. So you guys didn't start out as a mobile app, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. You guys started out on the web. Right, so right. what were some of the motivations in building a mobile application? Now, this might seem kind of silly only because you know, it seems like the thing that everyone's doing. But uh, usually, it's a good idea to have a very good reason for doing so. Absolutely. Um, BuzzFeed you know, started as a community kind of based website. And we wanted to go where our users were. Uh, a lot of our really heavy users um, are on the site all the time. They're digging through content. They're reacting and sharing content. And the mobile experience is just a more intimate experience where they can have that interaction in the palm of their hand um, and very easily be able to find the things that they're interested in. So we wanted to uh, branch out on onto where our users were and give them the tools that they need to kind of enjoy our content the best. Plus, it passes the one-minute test. Say you're in a in a meeting and you're bored, you launch the app and you can you know see the cute cats and. You know, Not that we encourage not, not looking at cute cats during yes. business meetings, but you can, you can do with it. BuzzFeed. And do you guys ever do this at your meetings at BuzzFeed? Yes, it's part of our job actually <laughs> to look at yeah, yeah. cute animals during meetings. So, how long has the mobile app kind of been out there? 
Uh, I'd say it's been out there for two years now. In two uh, years, and it started, you launched on iOS first, and the Android version's been out for how long? A uh, year and a half to two. What, if you, uh, what, are, what are kind of your primary learnings after launching a mobile application and how your users differ in web and mobile usage? Uh, we found that the mobile apps user are always on the app. Uh, they browse through the content more than they browse through our site. Uh, Right. Um, typical BuzzFeed users often come to BuzzFeed when they're linked in from uh, Facebook or Twitter, and they might not be familiar with this BuzzFeed. Is BuzzFeed web. Yeah, yeah. They'll be linked. Uh, maybe they're on their phone looking at Facebook, and they'll be linked out onto the BuzzFeed website. Um, you know, and they'll get their their content, but they might not you know stick with BuzzFeed as, as a site. What um, the, the difference, I think, in our user base is that you have these really dedicated users who are using the app that are firing it up multiple times a day. They're digging through feeds and feeds of content. And then they find the articles that interest them, where essentially it's the opposite, where you have somebody that comes and sees an article first rather than you know, our, our great list of content. Um, and then we need to encourage those people to either use the app or engage more with our, with our mobile web content. Yeah, and exactly. They're more engaged on the app. That's Absolutely, they're sharing more. They're reacting more. Um, you know, they're just they're more engaged with with the content that we're producing. Do, do you notice any uh, major classes of users? Like, for instance, you guys have mentioned the very heavy users, but beyond the heavy users, are there uh, typical classes that you would put them into, like the top three or four buckets? Um, you want to? <laughs> I can try. Um, no, I mean, I think you have you have. As far as app users, I think um, there are people that uh, are going to react to a lot of stuff and maybe aren't going to be as inclined to share with other people. And there's a lot of people that are just looking for things that kind of represent them. You know, if they're really into animals, they'll find the best animals post and then they'll have to show it to their friends. They'll have to show it. So, um, and those people uh, will, will just share a lot. And then there are people that are going to. Uh, they're going to have their favorite types of content. They're going to um, look at just you know tech posts or just politics. We have a great politics section that's become uh, really big recently. And people can use the app and just look at politics content. And they can just use that as a new vector of obtaining information about politics. So um, you know, we want you to share, and we want you to react and engage, but really we also want you to be able to get the kind of experience that you want with the application regardless. Yes, we do have casual users who come through, come to the app through the content. Either, you know, they saw it on their web, you know, or, or email link or tweet. Um, it's not just for the, you know, heavy I users. think I think that's the bucket that I fall into because when I use BuzzFeed, it's, if I'm in line at the bank and there's no one to talk exactly. to, right. my first inclination, I'm different from most people in that I will talk to random people you know, on the street. And this is very awkward for many people. But um, if there's no one to talk to, I'll pull it out and I'll look for a funny cat picture to save and set it out for later. So on, on that note, um, what types of analytics do you guys do? And what are your most important metrics, at least on mobile? And maybe if you can share anything about the web, that'd be great for our okay. viewers as well. Uh, we use Google Analytics. Uh, <laughs> Yay. Obviously. I did a show about Google Analytics a few months ago. Uh, nice. You know. uh, I mean, I mean, we have it. We, have, we have it integrated in everything, That's and um, I mean, we're interested in you know, pure how many people are coming to the website, how many people are using the app, but we also want to see how many pages, how many articles each of those people are using to see you know, is our content compelling enough? Do we have more content available for these people? Is the content that we're showing them relevant? Um, and then, you know, uh, on the website especially people who are not familiar with BuzzFeed, they'll see links to BuzzFeed content in Facebook or Twitter, and they'll come here and, you know, are they staying with us? Are they, or are they bouncing off? So bounce rate is something really important because we want to capture those people and we want to encourage them to use our application because we know that, you know, if you're interested in BuzzFeed content, you're going to love our app. You're going to love the kind of content the, that's on the app. So I cannot stress enough the importance of using analytics. I'm not just talking about Google Analytics. I mean using data to drive your decisions. Absolutely. Your that's true. App design. Yep. So I got I got to ask you guys this. What's, a, what's something that's happened in recent history where you have used analytics to make a decision about the product or the design or type of articles, article selection? Um, well, so I, we get really granular with analytics uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. at BuzzFeed. Um, 
and we're always trying to figure out new ways to encourage people to share content. So we mix up the kind of, you know, you might not see it every time you look at it, but we're always bucket testing, you know, what kind of uh, designs of uh, share buttons, where do we put them, how do we prompt people. And so just recently we did a few A-B tests on, on how buttons and text labels, and we wanted to see whether or not we show you how many other people have shared this content. It's going to encourage you to share more content. And we found and you know, some of the results were surprising, some of them weren't. And based on that, we came up with a, you know, a new format for displaying that information. And, Anything and you can share? Well, um, we found that people might not actually care that there were 2,000 likes on this article if they really like it themselves. And our results were pretty much inconclusive that like, you know, just because there's a count there doesn't mean that it's going to make you share more. So uh, in fact, it was the opposite. So we put the text labels back that just you know, tell you what the button's going to do. And I think people were more inclined to click on something where they knew what the action was going to result in. And that was something we learned through a test that only took a week. And uh, it's something that I think everyone out there can do with, with basic analytics software. And we have a big data team at BuzzFeed that is constantly, constantly crunching numbers and trying to figure out what's going viral and the best way to share it, um, to what platforms. and. And I'm going to ask you about that, Justin, oh about boy. your big data yes, team. Not, not uh, on the learning front, but on the surprising front. On, uh, ever since we released the YouTube integration on Android, the, uh, the number of videos played is actually more than the number of uh, Facebook share. Wow. That's amazing, and that's a, that's a very encouraging to our developers. So if you guys haven't started integrating the YouTube API yet, and you're doing any kind of video sharing, I highly encourage you to start looking at the uh, YouTube SDKs. So uh, before we go on to technical section, can you share anything about kind of the big picture things that are happening at BuzzFeed? Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot going on at BuzzFeed right now, especially um, with BuzzFeed Video. Um, We've hired Zay Frank to be our VP of video production, and he's out there creating uh, brand new custom content and posting it to YouTube. Um, we're, we're a little bit of background for our viewers that don't know who Zay Frank is. Yeah, Zay Frank is a great um, YouTube personality who's been creating videos for a very long time. He was one of the pioneers of uh, YouTube video, and um, he's really talented and really funny. So you should check him out. Uh, you can go to youtube.com slash BuzzFeed and see we have five channels already um, on YouTube. And we have more than a quarter million subscribers and over 50 million video views so far. So we're really excited to kind of use YouTube to expand our, our reach um, to not just use YouTube as a platform for displaying videos, but also um, integrate that social aspect that people do, that people use with commenting and subscribing and being able to kind of foster a BuzzFeed video ecosystem both on YouTube, on BuzzFeed, and, and kind of integrate both of them to each other. And I think that's where we're definitely moving forward to with uh, how BuzzFeed and, and video and YouTube are going are gonna to work in the future. Very, very cool. Did, was there anything you wanted to add to that? No, that's it. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to add you. I'm going to ask you the engineering version of that question. <laughs> so get ready. So, um, so on that note, uh, let's start talking a little bit about your, you know, engineering your tech stack. Okay. So uh, tell me, what, what are you guys running? What kind of techs are you? What what technology or frameworks are you guys using? If you can share that, of course. Okay, using some super uh, secret thing. Yeah, nothing, nothing yeah. secret. Uh, on the apps, uh, we do. Uh, we do the stock Android SDK, mm -hmm. and uh, we have integration tests that runs through each of the features that we have. Uh, and um, as an ongoing effort, uh, we are uh, integrating the builds into our, um, uh, you know, integration te the tests and the build would be integrated into Jenkins. That's Jenkins. The, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if you ever know what Jenkins, Jenkins yeah. is, I'm familiar with Jenkins when it was called Hudson. Right, when you yeah, used Jenkins, to be called Hudson. Yeah, yeah right, right. Uh, so that's the next step for us. Uh, uh, and Eclipse as the SDK standard. Mm -hmm. um, the Git is our version control. And we and have a lot of repos up on GitHub. GitHub, right. yeah, we, we go with GitHub. And, and uh, do you use anything, uh, you use Jenkins for builds. What about, you guys mentioned big data. What systems do you guys use for data analysis? Uh, well, I'm not actually involved <laughs> in that side. So, uh, 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 you know, our, our, yeah, our data team is, is really huge, and, and they're using all kinds of technologies to kind of pull stuff together. I know they're building stuff in Python right now. 
they're yeah, I mean, I, I don't huge. Know <laughs> it, yeah, I, I, I wish I could answer the question for exactly. you, but they're doing they're doing um, crazy, crazy number crunching. I think we'll have to we'll have to get them on a different. You're uh, seeing that trend a lot now, where you see these big data and analytics teams, and uh, the technologies they're all using. It's it's different every single shop you go to, right? Like you're saying you're using Python, and usually there's some kind of Hadoop used at every yep, single yep. shop, but just how people are using Hadoop is just it's different everywhere you that's go. Right. That's crazy. And it, it's, so, it's so specific, uh, as in, you know, the numbers that come out mm -hmm. obviously drive the editorial decision, you know. Probably it's different uh, different places. And we build our own tools to, to display the results of that on the front end, too. And we have developers who are only looking to do uh, infographics and infographic systems and being able to display relevant and interesting charts and graphs so that we can take all this data and crunch it down and display it in a few concise um, graphs and snippets. And that's really valuable to our development department, but also to our editorial team. They're able to, to use that to decide what they want to work on in the future. And also our, our partners and advertisers are able to get um, really good data out of our back end and, and use that to make uh, advertising decisions. So uh, Sandeep. Um, Hold on, I'm getting like a brain freeze at the moment. <laughs> it was like a it was a question I was right about to ask. It was okay. It's this. So in in working with the YouTube APIs, you guys using the uh, mobile SDK. What else are you using? Which other APIs are you using, if any? Uh, we do Facebook integration, so we use mm -hmm. Facebook SDK mm -hmm. uh, big time. Um, so yeah, uh, and uh, we use Critter Season uh, to record all the bugs. So we get uh, live bug reports so, uh, as as the as the app crashes, and that also that particular data helps us, or we use that data. It doesn't do a lot. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> do a lot, but <laughs> but if it does, does, we know, so we can fix it. Yeah, uh, you know that dry, like you know that that gets added to the the next release. You know, whenever it, we is there it. are there any was there anything you learned that you would like to share with other mobile developers or developers working with the YouTube APIs? Anything that's yes, certainly. So when we started out, uh, one YouTube API uh, on Android is well documented, so we had no issues integrating mm -hmm. uh, the SDK or API, and. Um, the other thing was we had a choice between using either the fragment or the activity. We chose the activity. Uh, your mileage might vary, but it's there's no difference between going either way. Uh, one technique we added was um, we wanted the user to have a seamless experience, as in uh, we wanted the user not to feel that as though he was he or she was taken outside of the app when right. they are viewing the video. So uh, we do this very uh, subtle fade uh, animation so that, and the activity that hosts the YouTube view mm -hmm. also has a background bitmap, which is, which is a screenshot of the web view they were on. And it, it has a slight gradient so that the view pops up. Uh, and this is uh, that's something we added, and it's pretty straightforward to you know anyone can add it. And yeah. it's, it It'll give you a, a nice smooth transition to the video player, right? And it gives a good experience to the user. Yeah. Absolutely, I've seen that before, where I've seen that, where I've seen applications, and you go to a new kind of. It looks like a new page is being pushed on top of the stack, where it's just a black background. Right. Whereas I looked at BuzzFeed, and I was looking at this, going, "How are they doing this? Uh -huh. How did they put the video on top of the app like this?" So. And I think the great part about, about using this in the future is that um, we can add, you know, right now we're kind of chromeless in that, in that view, but in the future we can kind of add right there sharing and reacting so that right. as you're watching the video, you can, you can still be able to do that kind of behavior and, and not have it interfere with the playing of the video, but, but make use of that black space that would That's otherwise appear. And we have great uh, video content, and we want to slowly uh, expose that to our users, you know. And the YouTube API has a YouTube uh, bitmap or image view right. class, which we are planning to use. It. And uh, you mentioned that you're starting to, it looks like you guys are starting to move into content creation as opposed to just curation. So we do have an API, the YouTube Analytics API, which is something that I would love to see you guys integrate with your tool chain at some point, because with the Analytics API, and we're starting to do this too with our shows, we're tracking how many minutes are being watched. This is something that's very important to YouTube, not just how many views we have, yep. but how many minutes are people watching. I mean, the problem is if you watch a video for five seconds, if you watch a video for 10 minutes, 
If you're just counting views, that's just a view, and it's not quite yeah. me. So I, I'd like to encourage people out there that are, are not using the iframe uh, API in their mobile websites to start doing that, um, because we are, we actually have an implementation um, using the iframe API where we're logging, uh, you know, percentages of, of videos that are watched, mm -hmm. and um, it's been it's been really helpful since switching over to, to the iframe API to make sure that videos are going to display more or less uniformly over all platforms, and it's really saved us a lot of headaches with dealing with flash on older mm -hmm. Android devices, um, dealing with videos displaying pro properly on uh, iOS devices. So um, yeah, you, you use, switch over to that if you haven't yet. Yeah. So it sounds like the tips that we have here are uh, use analytics, use the iframe API. Uh, there are a few other ones. Uh, bitmap background. Bitmap background. Smooth, smooth animation. <laughs> yeah. So uh, anything else that you want to, uh, any else feedback you would have for us, for the YouTube API or the SDKs, anything you'd like to see? Uh, the one thing I'd like to see in is a way to measure, as you said, uh, the ones you do with the analytics. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, we want to measure how many seconds or you know whether they played the full video or not right mm -hmm. you know it would be nice to have that kind of feedback in the you know either the fragment or the view I see okay well that's very good information we'll pass on you definitely get that information when using analytics API right. but for the videos that you upload yeah, yeah. so for for other people's videos it's not going to be quite as easy so. right so yeah from the app yeah okay. Yeah, I think we've only really scratched the surface of what of what we can do with uh, YouTube APIs, and I think that in the future, integrating more features uh, that are out there, like uh, being able to comment, like, and um, subscribe to YouTube channels directly from from where you're watching videos, is gonna is gonna help kind of yeah, bring those ecosystems together and and create a better experience for the user, so they can see their content wherever they want. Okay, great. Um, so I'm guessing that after we're done, this show is going to be posted YouTube, and maybe we can get that into BuzzFeed, huh? That yeah, yeah, we yeah, yeah. Out of this, yeah. And then if you're a user out there on BuzzFeed, you can post you can post any video you create and try to make it go viral. And our editors, if they pick it up, you can be the next uh, big BuzzFeed YouTube star. So <laughs> who knows? Well, I want to thank you guys for coming into our studio today. Thank it's you. been an absolute blast. Thanks for having us. Thank you guys for sharing all this information. I think this is really good information that other developers uh, they need to know because some people they're starting to look into this and they haven't kind of dived in yet. And we really like working with you guys because you guys are one of our first partners to jump That's in right. and help uh, help us ship the Android SDK. So thank you guys for that, and thank we look forward to you. working with you guys again. In the future. Yeah, we will. Right. Absolutely. All right. We and. One more okay. thing. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just got the, the voice from above. Oh, okay. um, we are hiring. Yes. Uh, we are hiring at Google Developer Relations, and <laughs> that was so awkward, <laughs> which was uh, go to google.com slash jobs, and you should be able to find a list of jobs. I work in developer relations, as do my colleagues. Sometimes you watch the show, you'll see Jeff or Ibrahim or Yarek or Jeremy. Just check us out. Take a look to see if it's something you want to do and send us your applications. And what about you guys? Are you guys hiring? We are always hiring. <laughs> what are you guys hiring for? Uh, we're hiring for editors and uh, sales and, and uh, also development. So check out our, our job postings. Yeah, we're, we're growing. We're growing. Where, where are the jobs at? Which location? That's a good question, which we don't know. Uh, you'll have to check it out. There's yeah. definitely in New well, York. You guys we're, work. We're, we're, here, we're here in New York City. <laughs> found a job, so you know. <laughs> but um, also out in LA, we're, we're opening. And, um, and so, yeah, BuzzFeed is a, is a great place to work. Come work for us. You heard it That's here. Sure. BuzzFeed is a great place to work. Google's kind of cool, too. You know, we're all right. So thank you guys very much for joining us. And we'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye, guys.